What's up everyone? I'm travel photographer Brendan Vanson from brendansadventures.com and I'm here in Chengdu, China. So I made it to the city of Chengdu, which is in the Sichuan province of China. Now the Sichuan province has 80% of the world's living panda bears. And right here in the city of Chengdu, there is a research base and breeding center that operates largely like a zoo and does some amazing things. And I thought that it would, take, it would be a great opportunity to go out that way and show you how to take pictures at a zoo-like environment. So these are my seven tips on how to take photos at the zoo. Number one rule to shooting animals at a zoo is to come during feeding times. Animals are most active when they're being fed and they spend most of the rest of the day sleeping. So come when they're being fed. Second rule of shooting at a zoo is bring some sort of stabilization. Tiffany's got the monopod rolling over there and that helps us get really sharp images. The light is low right now, so we need that. We're shooting about F4 with uh, 500 ISO right now to get the sharpest pictures. The next rule to shooting any wildlife, any animals, any people really, is to focus on the eyes. When you focus on the eyes using an f-stop like f3.2, f4, something like that, you're going to have the whole face in focus. So that's what we're doing here with this, uh, this panda out there sleeping on the tree looking all cute and stuff. So another big tip in all wildlife photography, but especially zoos, is sometimes you get elements in the foreground, fences or foliage. And if you shoot a low f-stop like f2.8, f3.5, 4, anywhere like that, it blurs the foreground and actually makes it so you don't even see it or at least doesn't create a distracting element and keeps the focus on the wildlife or the animal. So the next tip comes to focusing. Now wildlife's always moving around and sometimes it's hard to grab them in the right focus. So we're gonna do what's called back button focusing. If you don't know what back button focusing is, find a YouTube video on it and learn it. Basically on a Canon camera, we're doing focus on servo mode. And rather than focusing up here, we've got our focus button back here. And we just hold this button as the animal moves and we're shooting. So that way the camera's always focusing as the animal's moving, we get more shots that are sharp. Ever since I've been shooting back button focusing, I've kept probably twice as many images. Do it. The final tip from out in the field here is to crop for action. Never crop the animal too tight in your image. Leave a little bit of area on one side of the image that the animal can move into. Use the open area in your image to tell a story. Now let's go back and see how these images turned out. So I'm back here in the digital darkroom, AKA the hostel, and I thought I'd run through some of the images I shot at the zoo today, at the Panda Center, and explain the tips that I told you out in the field. So one of the tips I told you was to catch them at feeding time. These red pandas, which were awesome in most of my favorite photos from the Panda Sanctuary, were taken of the red pandas, and they were taken right around feeding time. If I was there off feeding time, these guys probably would have been in the woods or they would have been sleeping or they would have been doing anything other than posing for photos. Now this one's obvious, it's got the bowl right in front of it, but most of my red panda shots were taken around a feeding area and captured them in the area on their way to food or on their way out of uh, getting food. So that's a, ma a major thing, find out the feeding times of the animals. Next image is to stabilize. Uh, it was really dark in there, and so I really needed to go fast, sh as fast shutter speed as possible, but there's times you can't. There's images I shot today that are 1 over 60 and f2.8 or f3.5, uh, stuff like that. But if I didn't have the monopod, I wouldn't have got a single sharp shot today, I don't think. that Not only are the animals moving, but you're moving as well if you don't have a monopod or a stabilization device. So you need that stabilization device. Monopods in zoos and for wildlife work brilliantly. I love my monopod. Um, I mentioned to crop for action. So the way I've cropped this image was basically to tell a story. You're all wondering now, what, what is this bear going for? 
And that's exactly what I've done here. That's the reason I've done it this way is because I'm trying to tell a story by the way I crop the image. And just by the way its head is pointed and I'm cropping that section out, it makes you wonder what is over in that direction. I've done the same thing for this image. I cropped it out here. Even though this bear is probably just going to the next food stall, it looks uh, it, it's shot in a way that makes you wonder what is it going over there for. Uh, it tells a story. You need to tell stories with your wildlife images, whether they're in the zoo or out in wild. This was an image from the tip to shoot through the fences. So basically with this image, I got low to the eye level of the animal, which probably should have been another tip. That's a wildlife photography tip. Shoot from the eye level of the animal. I got down to my knees to eye level with this red panda. And there was a fence there, a wire fence. And I put the lens right on that wire fence and shot straight through it so that the wire wasn't in the shot. And that came out beautifully. I think that's my favorite image of the day. Just really crisp. Good shot, shot from way down at the red panda's eye level. This is another one of my favorite shots, and this comes down to the tip of back button focusing. I back button focused this red panda that was walking along this path. If I didn't back button focus this shot, it would have been way out of focus. I know that. I would have missed this shot. So do yourself a favor if you're a photographer. Get on to another YouTube channel and learn how to back button focus because it will change your life. Again, one of my favorite photos of the entire day that I would have missed had I not been back button focusing. Uh, next one, again around feeding time. Um, this is shot again through the fence with a really low aperture. I think this was 2.8. Um, one of the other tips I gave you was to shoot for the eyes. So. When you're shooting, always aim at the eye. That's where your focus point should be. It should give you enough focus um, to run all the way through the face in most cases. And it really draws out the emotion if you have the focus right there. So with wildlife and people, aim for the eyes of the animal and make sure that's the sharpest part of your image. Now, the seventh tip that I'll give you that I didn't give you out in the field is don't over edit wildlife. Wildlife needs to be shot right in the camera. You need to shoot am animals right in the camera. And you need to shoot it in the right light or else you're going to lose all the emotion, all the detail and all the color. So if you look how I edited this image, there's basically nothing I did here. The exposure is all the same. Everything's straight up. I dropped the, the blacks a little bit, which wasn't even necessary. I just wanted to bring out some of the, the contrast there. And then I've added some color and a touch of clarity to, again, draw out some of the details. But that's it. That's all you have to do to wildlife images. It's all you should be doing to animal images. Get them right in the camera, in the right light, in the right scene, and you don't need to do anything extra. All the images I shot today were on my 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8, which is a great lens to bring to the zoo. So that's it for the show. Be sure you subscribe to the channel. There's lots of really cool places and some cool photography lessons and tutorials coming up. This is a reminder, you do not need to travel around the world to take cool photos. Head to your local zoo, as long as it's a reputable zoo, and take some photos. Give it a shot. Big, bring the big lens out. Go to a store. Rent a lens. Rent a long lens. And take photos. Shoot everything. Try to turn everything into art. Photography is amazing. And to do great travel photography, you do not need to travel around the world. Explore your backyard. I'll see you next time. Peace.